So here we are in the Australian class, and the two things we want to do here is we want to create uh, our own greet method for Australian. So we said that in, instead of saying hello, Australians usually say good day. So I'm going to put that in. And also we said that we need this constructor in order to get the file to compile. Let me just show you, first of all, that this is fine as it is. If I was to take this constructor out, you'll see that the compiler will complain and will not allow this class to compile. We'll talk a different day about why we need to match the constructors here to get it to compile. We'll also talk another day about reviewing this super keyword, which we have spent some time on during the course of the year, but now we're going to just talk about all the nuances of super, of which there are several. And even though your AP exam is supposed to be a computer science exam and it's not supposed to focus on the minutia of Java, my experience has been looking at the question pool that they do sometimes focus on the minutia of Java. And this super keyword, when it's used as a constructor call like this, has lots of minutia associated with it. You know what I mean by minutia, right? Lots of picky and little details that you have to memorize. And so we will talk about that a different day. Today, I want to focus on this keyword here and how it is that we override or don't override methods. Notice here that I have this greet method, and I want you to look at the, the signature of this greet method here. You can see that it has a uh, no parameters in its list here, so it's just called by itself. And look over here at the person class, and you can see that it has a similar signature where it's called greet and has no parameters. And because the signatures match here, we are essentially overriding. Now, if I was to have a different signature in the greet method, so for example, let's say I put a parameter in here like this. Now you can see the compiler is warning me that the signatures don't match, and so therefore I'm not actually overriding it. What would happen if I was to remove this at override and I were to hit the compile button right now? Describe with your partner, do you think this would compile or not? Miss Ariam, what's your opinion? Do you think this will compile? You can see that it compiles fine, but try to understand that you are not achieving your goal of overriding the methods. So what's happening here is that the person method has its own greet method and the Australian has its own greet method. And when you call it, if you give it a parameter, this one will get called. And if you don't give it a parameter, then this one will get called. But you're not overriding, you're not replacing the functionality of the person's greet with the Australian's greet because they have different signatures. So here you can see why this override is useful because here the compiler is gonna keep me from making a mistake because it's going to tell me that, hey, you didn't match the signatures of those methods, and therefore you are not overriding. So I've been using this term in the last few minutes called the signature of the method, and that is an important concept in Java and in programming languages in general. Let me explain to you what I mean by the signature of a method. The signature of a method consists of the name of the method, the parameter types of the method, and the order of the parameter types. So for example, if I had a method name called greet and it took one integer argument as a parameter, uh, the signature might look something like this. That might be uh, the signature for a method that is perhaps written like this. A method that is declared like this might have a signature that looks like this. Likewise, if this method was to have two parameters, the signature might look like this. And so what happens when the compiler is trying to figure out whether you're overriding or not, is it looks at these signatures and sees if they match or not. You can only override if the name and the data types of the parameters match exactly. Furthermore, if I had two, two different greet methods, one that was like this and the other one that was like this, do you think that these two methods will override? Will, will this method, for example, override this one? What do you think? Mr. Baker, what do you think? It will not. Tell me why, sir. The signatures are not the same. You can see that the signature of this method is going to be like this, and the signature of this method is going to be like this. So you can see that the order of the parameter types is an important differentiator for the signatures of the methods. You see that, right? Now, the return type of the method is a little bit more complicated, that situation. What I can tell you is that if you have two methods, 
that have the same names and the same signatures here like this. If you have a situation like this where they otherwise have the same signature and you were to make one have one data return type and the other one have a different return type, this will, number one, not override. It will also not not override. In fact, this will not compile, okay, because the compiler is all confused. Do you want to override or not? On one hand, you're telling me that the signatures match. But on the other hand, you're telling me it's got a different return type. How can that be? So here's a third situation where it won't compile at all. So once again, the important parts of overriding is you have to have the name of the method be the same. The parameter types have to be the same and the order of the parameter types have to be the same. When all three of these factors, when all three of these criteria are met, then we can successfully overwrite a method. So with that idea in our heads, I would like you to look at this list of methods and decide with your partner which of these override and which do not, and if there are any that won't compile at all. Mr. Manet, sir, look at this first pair here. I have a go method that takes an int and a string and returns a void. And I have another go method that takes an int and string and returns a void. And what I want to know is, will this method override this one? Yeah. The answer is yes, it will override. Let's look at this one here. Uh, and what do you think is gonna happen here? Miss Banerjee, what's your idea here? Okay, so it won't compile. I'll just call, I'll call it a C here, so it won't compile. Okay, how about this one right over here? Uh, Mr. Degouge, what do you think about this combination here? It won't override, it'll still compile though, it just won't override. And now over here, Mr. Mason, what do you think about this situation right here? Okay, so we'll not override. And how about this last one here? Ms. Uh, Om Kumar, what do you think about this? Won't override. One last question I have for you is, what's going to happen if I do this? Question, will override, won't override, won't compile? Mr. Garofalo, do you think this will compile, sir? Yes, it will. These are two completely different methods. So the fact that the two signatures don't, uh, sorry, the fact that the return types don't match is of no consequence. So this is a simple, will not override. All right, so getting back to our little uh, problem of having an Australian here, uh, you can see that to get it to override the greet method, we need to have the signatures match like this. And now we're gonna go over to the test code and we're going to test this out. So I'm going to go ahead and now create another person who's an Australian. No one mentioned this year being off. I mean, that's like way in the future here. Well, anyway. All right. So I've created these two people here, one a regular person, one an Australian. And then I've, um, I've created two people here, one a regular person, an Australian. I've printed their information and I've also called the greet methods on each of them. My first question to you is when I print the Australian here, is the Australian class going to know how to print itself? Miss Missone, what do you think? It inherits the two strings, so it knows how to print itself. And now what's gonna print here and what's gonna print there? Okay, Miss Siegel, what's gonna print when the regular person does the greet? So here is the greet method for the regular person. It's going to print hello. And then what's going to happen when the Australian person does a greet? Okay, so let's run this. So you can see that the regular person says hello and the Australian person says good day. So now we have discussed what it means to override. Here you can see that the Australian class is overriding the greet method from its parent class. Now, I've been using this term parent class and child class. Those are actually not what Java people prefer. Java prefer people prefer base class and derived class. The base class is like the parent class and the derived class is the class that inherits from the base class. Those are more official terms. The parent child thing is left over from previous languages that I have learned. Anyway, uh, so you can see here we are successfully overriding.